creationists will often point out that science has yet to explain how the very first life came into existence through natural processes, which is known as abiogenesis. However, evolution doesn't describe how the first life occurred. It only describes what happened after life came into existence. Even if a god created the first life, the evidence for evolution since then would remain just as strong. Regardless, we can still make some predictions about what evidence we might expect to see if abiogenesis is true versus whether creationism is true. In the main abiogenesis model, the simple molecules and environmental conditions of the early lifeless Earth had to be able to produce the basic building blocks of life. In the creation model, all life was created fully formed, so there should be no evidence indicating that simple chemistry can automatically turn into the basic building blocks of life. So what evidence do we see? Well, if you replicate in a lab the various possible molecular and environmental conditions likely present on the prebiotic Earth, or even in outer space, it doesn't take long for inorganic molecules to automatically produce dozens of the complex organic molecules necessary for life. The repeated heating, cooling, and irradiation of these molecules, as would be expected on a prebiotic Earth, can also cause the spontaneous formation of ribonucleotides, which are the precursors of RNA and DNA, and exposure of those ribonucleotides to certain natural clays causes them to spontaneously assemble into RNA strands, and RNA is capable of duplicating itself, which is a fundamental requirement for life. These discoveries have led researchers to suspect that the first life may have been based on RNA, Indeed, some viruses, which are the most primitive life on Earth today, are based on RNA rather than DNA. Meanwhile, simple fatty acids that also form naturally in prebiotic conditions automatically assemble into structures resembling cell membranes. And DNA inserted within those cell membrane-like structures can successfully replicate under the right conditions. This doesn't mean we know all the steps that led to the formation of the first life, at least not yet but clearly many of the initial steps occur automatically under completely natural conditions. This is not what we would expect to find if creationism is true and all life was created in a single supernatural event, but it is exactly what we would expect to find if life emerged on its own from non-living molecules. In all the examples I've given, evolutionary theory makes predictions that are required to be true in order for evolution to be true, and in fact those predictions have proven to be correct. Yet those examples are not the only evidence supporting evolutionary theory. I didn't even get into island biogeography, sexual selection, polyploid speciation, convergent evolution, and so on, because my primary focus here isn't to prove that evolution is true, but to show what happens when you compare the predictions of young earth creationism with the predictions of evolutionary theory. As you can see, creationism comes up short in every case, the best it ever manages is to not be completely incompatible with some of the evidence, but in most cases the evidence flat out contradicts it. And because the evidence doesn't support creationism, creationists tend to focus their efforts on attacking evolution rather than defending creationism. Even though proving evolution wrong would do nothing to support creationism, since you still need supportive evidence to justify accepting a claim. An example of one of these creationist attacks is the claim that evolutionary theory isn't scientific because we can't directly observe evolution changing one species into a drastically different species. But since when has science ever required direct observation in order to be valid? We can't directly observe temperature, radiation, atoms, neuroelectrical activity, the interiors of stars and planets, quantum entanglement, gravity waves, and so on. Yet we can use indirect methods to measure and model them accurately, and make successful predictions about them. Like evolution, the whole science of forensics is based on determining what happened in the past, yet nobody would claim that we can't successfully solve crimes using DNA, fingerprints, gunshot residue, ballistics, etc. Evolutionary science works essentially the same way, only using different tools to study much older events. The indirect evidence from taxonomy, the fossil record, genetics, etc. are as conclusive as any forensic evidence. Creationists have made well over 500 additional claims against evolution, and scientists have refuted them all. 
although responding to every claim here would be impractical, and that's not the point of this video anyway. If you go to the Talk Origins link I've provided in the description bar, or Google Creationist Claims and click on the first link, you will find refutations of pretty much every creationist claim ever made. Creationism is a religious belief that cannot accept evidence that contradicts that belief. That means creationism is not scientific, and so it should come as no surprise that the evidence does not support it. The evidence does, however, support evolution, and it does so overwhelmingly. Anyone who thinks otherwise has not studied evolutionary theory or the evidence, or is deliberately ignoring the facts. It's as simple as that.